Welcome back to Grand Adventure. I'm your host, Mark Guido. And in today's episode, whether you're tent camping like this or you're traveling in an RV, we're gonna share how to safely camp in bear country. So stick around. Bears have amazing memories. If they've eaten food from a human even once, they will return to that area again and again looking for food. Bears also become much more aggressive once they've obtained food somewhere. So inevitably, contact with human supplied food leads to the bear having to be destroyed. There are things that you can practice as a good camper that'll protect both you and the bear. And sloppy campers, they not only endanger themselves, they also endanger future campers. Now, most of what we're gonna talk about today applies whether you're tent camping or in an RV. Uh, bears could tear into the side of a hard-sided RV or even a car if they smell food inside. As a matter of fact, in places like Yosemite, bears have even learned to peel open car doors or open locked coolers if they smell food inside. And if you're in a tent, or a soft-sided RV like a pop-up tent camper or a hybrid, you need to be extra vigilant. Now let's discuss for a moment the two types of bears that are found in North America. The American black bear and the American brown bear, also known as a grizzly. We'll first talk about black bears because they are the most widely ranging and the most prevalent in the country. They range up and down both the west coast and the east coast and they travel as far south as the Florida panhandle. Uh, now, contrary to their name and popular perception, they're not always black. Sometimes they're brown or even a blondish color. Uh, adults can range anywhere from around 90 pounds for a small female to nearly 300 pounds for a large adult male. Uh, usually when they have encounters with humans, it's as a result of food. Uh, they have an amazing sense of smell. It's about seven times more powerful than a domestic dog's sense of smell and they can smell food from literally miles away uh, usually these encounters that have happened with humans usually happen in a place like a developed campground or something similar to that where they're accustomed to being around humans and have learned to associate humans with food generally speaking a black bear will not attack a human uh, it's usually a case of mistaken identity when really all they're after is food now, the much larger and much more aggressive cousin to the American black bear is the American brown bear, or a grizzly. Now, in the lower 48, uh, there are about 1,500 grizzlies left, and their range has shrank considerably over the last century or two. They now inhabit Montana, parts of Idaho, Washington State, and Wyoming. Over half that population is actually in Montana. In Canada, they're across British Columbia and Alberta. And of course, there's a large population of brown bears in Alaska as well. Now, brown bears are distinguishable from black bears by a rather substantial hump just behind their neck. Uh, black bears don't have that hump. Uh, they have much larger claws than black bears and their bite is incredibly powerful. Their jaw can press down over a thousand PSI. It's been estimated that it's actually capable of crushing a bowling ball. Uh, encounters with humans, about 70% of the encounters of grizzly bears with humans have occurred in situations where the grizzly felt that they needed to defend their cubs. Uh, don't want to ever be around a grizzly at all, really, but especially if there are cubs around. Now, because of a bear's incredible sense of smell, it's in incredibly important to keep your camping area clean. Uh, not only are you endangering yourself, but you're endangering future campers. If you allow things like food particles to remain on the ground, that's like a calling card for a bear. Make sure that you stow all foodstuffs or things that smell like foodstuffs. Uh, that's not only food, that's also grills, that's also things like sunscreens and toothpaste even. Uh, those all smell like food to a bear. Now, if you're in a campground with a bear box, make sure that you store your food, your coolers, your grill, and all that stuff 
in the bear box. If a bear box is not available, uh, keep it in your car, in your locked car, some distance away from your tent or your camper. If you're in the backcountry, backpacking, tent camping, uh, either use a bear canister or hang your food. We'll show you how to do that here. First off, place all your food in a bag, along with any cooking utensils and equipment that may still hold the scent of food. We keep 100 feet of high tensile strength nylon cord bundled in this small stuff sack with one end of the cord attached to the stuff sack itself. This allows us to hang the food up to 50 feet off the ground. After removing and laying out the cord, we put a few small rocks in the stuff sack to give it some weight for throwing. We then throw the stuff sack over a nearby branch. The higher off the ground, the better. And keep it as far away from the tree trunk as possible. Because don't forget, bears can climb trees. Now we tie the stuff sack to our food bag before grabbing the loose end of our 100 foot line and pulling the food bag up into the tree. Finally, we tie off the food bag until morning, when we'll untie it and lower our food back to the ground. Now, it's equally important to keep your pets under your command at all times and also never unattended. If you do store your food inside your vehicle, cover it up and keep it out of sight. Because in some areas, bears are smart enough, they've actually learned to associate the sight of coolers or even grocery shopping bags with food. And uh, you might want to rethink, depending on how large the bear population is in your area and what type of bear, you might even want to rethink barbecuing outside or even roasting those marshmallows over the campfire. Now, when you're hiking in bear country or even hanging around in camp, keep a can of bear spray on hand Avoid hiking during dusk and dawn because that's the time when bears are most active out looking for food. And hike in large groups. Make sure that you make a lot of sound going down the trail. Uh, be it calling out repeatedly, wearing a bear bell, and you may look like a freak doing so, but even singing as you're going down the, can down the trail. Uh, the reason being, what you're doing is you're alerting that bear to your approach and giving the bear the opportunity to get the heck out of there before you arrive. Now, if you do encounter a bear, the most important thing you can do is stand your ground. Make yourself look as huge as humanly possible and make as much noise as you possibly can. If necessary, even throw rocks in the direction of the bear and use your bear spray if the bear does in fact charge or attack. If your vehicle's nearby, set off your car alarm or carry an air horn. The idea here is to make the encounter with the human as unpleasant as possible, making the bear not want to repeat that ever again. For your experience camping in bear country, that doesn't need to be an unpleasant one. Some of the most spectacular camping in the entire country is in bear country, and it would be an absolute shame for you to miss those opportunities just out of concern for a chance encounter with a bear. We hope that this video has been helpful to you if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up down below. And also down below, you'll find the comment section where we would love to hear from you and receive your suggestions on how to safely camp in bear country. Now we put out new outdoor adventure travel videos each and every Wednesday. So if you're not yet a grand adventurer, now's the time to smash that little subscribe button down there in the corner and ring that notification bell. And we would be honored if you share grand adventure with your friends, family, and on social media. Until next week, please remember, life is nothing but a grand adventure. We'll see you then.